Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. We're here today to talk about a new Bricks kind of small form factor machine. This is the Bricks Projector, otherwise known as the BXP i3-4010. And what that model number indicates to you is basically some of the performance levels and uh, hardware characteristics of it. But the real standout feature of this device is the fact that it essentially takes a Nook style form factor, a four inch by four inch motherboard uh, with integrated processor, MSATA, storage device and wireless connectivity and adds onto it a Pico or mini projector device. Uh, it's the in, uh, They actually act kind of independently. You can run the system without the projector or the projector without the system. Uh, and it's actually a pretty interesting integration of hardware. If we take a look at the system as a whole, if you look at the front, you have a pair of USB 3.0 ports. You have an audio output that is either for headphones or digital output. And of course you have the lens for the projector. On the left-hand side, you'll actually see a focus knob, which is for the projector itself. Uh, on, actually, in these slits on the bottom are part of the stereo speaker configuration. On the back, you have interesting options. Two more USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, mini display port output, and HDMI output, in addition to your power connection. Maybe more interesting are the mini HDMI input as well as the projector on off button. When you power on the system by default, you have to actually power the projector on separately. The mini HDMI input's interesting as this allows you to connect external devices, uh, a DVD player or a game console up to the projector and it will override the PC and display whatever's on there. So for instance, we were able to use it to output Xbox One playing Titanfall, you know, just as an example of, of showing that it would work. On the right hand side you'll find uh, nothing else there in terms of connectivity, but you will find the outlet for the fan on the projector. That's maybe the biggest downside to this device is the noise of the fan. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and see if you can get any indication of the sound level difference that you get when you actually turn on the projector itself. It may be hard to come across in the video, but it's a noticeable increase in noise from the device when you actually have the projector running versus when you don't. And obviously if you're using this for its kind of intended purpose, that's going to be there all the time. So having this running full time in your bedroom or dorm room or something like that could be a bit annoying. You'll have to turn it off when you go to bed, things like that. Everything else on the inside is pretty straightforward. If we look at the hardware inside, it's powered by a Core i3 4010U processor. Now this is a, a low-end Haswell-based part. It's two cores, four threads. It's rated at 1.7 gigahertz. There are no, uh, there's no boost in this. There's, there's, that's, that's a fixed clock speed there, actually. Uh, it's got Intel HD 4400 graphics, so a little bit under anything else we've seen in Ultrabook designs uh, and in other Nook and Bricks products. Uh, but other than that, you've got to install your own DDR3 SODIMM memory. You've got to install your MSATA hard drive, and then you're up and running, right? You've got your MSATA SSD and your memory. That's pretty much everything there is from the computing standpoint. And then you have the projector part on top of it. Now, this device is sold as bare bones. It's going to be about $550 to $600, depending on where you look. Uh, and that sounds fairly expensive for the hardware that you get and uh, you know I can't argue with that mentality. Uh, when we started looking at prices of Pico projectors and mini projectors, you're going to pay anywhere from $250 to $350 for one of those. This particular unit is actually a 75 lumen DLP mini projector. So it's actually a fairly good uh, brightness output. You know, obviously uh, in studio lights, it's a little bit harder to see. If you can dim the lights or turn the lights off, it's going to work much better. Your resolution is WVGA, that's 854 by 480, which definitely causes some problems. Applications like Steam don't shrink any smaller than, uh, than what we had there. You know, installing games, you kind of had to hit enter when you wouldn't know when you nor to normally hit enter. Uh, big picture mode worked fine, but in standard Windows mode it did not. Uh, it is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 900 to 1 contrast ratio is what it's uh, rated at. And it's got integrated 1.5 watt Dolby stereo speakers, which are serviceable, but are basically like integrated monitor speakers on some low cost displays. So don't count on them for any high quality viewing experience, but they'll work in a pinch. Use cases for this are going to vary from person to person. The idea of having a device that has one power cord, all it needs is a black, uh, blank wall, rather, black wall would be 
poor choice, but a blank wall of some kind to act as the display is pretty compelling if you have a house and you've got a bunch of family coming over for Thanksgiving or some family event and you want to put the kids in a separate room. They can watch cartoons, watch YouTube videos. They can absolutely do that. You don't have to have a TV in that room, in the basement or wherever it is. Uh, and they can either use headphones or use those integrated speakers. You know, Gigabyte says that this might be good for kids away at school working in a dorm or living in a dorm rather that can use the PC hooked up to an external monitor maybe for their computing work or using the projector and then use the projector for watching movies, playing games, you know, for their console, things like that. Their business users might like this if they can take this into a, a, an office space that doesn't have an integrated projector and share it on a larger scale. You can blow this up as big as you want. It is a projector, but obviously you're going to have to deal with the low light output and how the brightness of the room really stacks up. So it's a really, really interesting design. We thought of several unique ways that we could use it here in the office, maybe having it attached to the ceiling, pointing at one of our, you know, pull down shades on one of the windows, acting as a full-time statistic monitor for the website, right? Something like that. There are a lot of interesting use cases for it. And even though it starts at 550 and you have to add storage and memory, it's not that bad of a deal, but don't expect a barn burner in terms of performance. You're not gonna be able to play a whole lot of games on this. We showed you running, we showed it running Peggle, for example, we'll be able to do that. It might be able to play things like Faster Than Light, um, but don't try to run Metro on this or Bioshock Infinite or something. It's not going to work out very well for you. So uh, this is the Brix Projector, otherwise known as the BXP i3 4010.